making sure you get consistent characters is incredibly useful, especially if you're making children's books, for your own brand, animations, or for advertising. I will be showing you my method on how I created this character. I've got some awesome tips that you hopefully haven't seen before. And I'll show you a short story I created using this character that I've made. So stay tuned for that. But first, I want to show you how to do it. I will be focusing on animated looking characters in this video. I have made another video creating character consistency, but with more realistic looking people. So feel free to check out that video. The link to that is in the description box below. Okay, so let's start with creating a character. This method is using the character reference parameter or the CREF parameter, and it's incredibly powerful. So this is the prompt I'm using. I'm looking for a CGI Pixar animated look for this character. So as you can see, I included that in the prompt. I've made sure to add in all the details that I want in this character as well, as that helps Midjourney to kind of flesh it out with a bit more detail. And these are the characters that Midjourney generated. I really like the look of the top left character, so I'm going to use that one. I've upscaled that character, but I want to change some aspects of this character. And you can do that by using the Very Region tool. So I want to change his shoes and get rid of that logo on his hat as I find it a bit distracting. So just click Very Region, select this lasso tool, I'll select his shoes, and that bit on the hat. Red shoes and red hat. It did a really good job. As you can see, it's changed his shoes, and it's also got rid of that logo on the hat. Now I'll probably go for this bottom left one, seems pretty good to me. So what you want to do now is copy your character link, and we will use that in the character reference parameter. So let's try create a scene with this character in and see how consistent it looks. All right, so I've added in my prompt and I've gone for a young boy sitting on a park bench. I find it's best to include the description of your character inside these prompts as well. Even though you're using character reference, I feel like all this information just adds to create a more consistent character. And then for your character reference, you want to add in dash dash CREF and then paste in the link to your character. And they look pretty good. They're not perfect. And this is the thing you will maybe need to rerun some of these prompts just till you find the one that looks just like your character, but they're very close. And I could easily choose one of these to use in say a children's book or animation. And I don't think anyone would notice really. And just to add a quick note, you can use Niji mode as well. I find that will work best if you've got a more anime looking character. So now I'm going to jump over to the Midjourney Alpha website as I just really like using that interface. Now, if you don't have Midjourney Alpha yet, all you need to have done is created 1000 images using Midjourney, then you get access to it. You can do the same thing in the Discord website, but I just find the Midjourney Alpha website has a better interface. Now let's have a look at character weight. Character weight ranges from zero to 100. With character weight set at 100, which is the default, your character will remain mostly the same. Whereas if you go down to character weight zero, it will only keep the face the same. So you can change clothing and other aspects. Let's have a look at putting this character in different scenarios with different clothing. I've gone for a wide shot of a boy hiking up a snowy mountain, wearing winter clothing and snow boots. And I've gone for a character weight of zero, so hopefully it should change all of his clothing. Remember to put in your character reference link at the end, or if you're in the Midjourney Alpha website, just drag the image into the prompt and click this little person icon, just so that it automatically adds the CREF parameter. They came out looking pretty good. So as you can see, we've got our character and he's up on the mountain. It's changed all of his clothes and they look very appropriate for the setting. He's got his warm puffy jacket on, he's got a hat still but it's different, and the snow boots. That's really cool. And here is an image using a character weight of 50, so in the halfway mark. As you can see, it's added some elements of the prompt, so he's got a different jacket on, he looks a bit more geared towards this snowy terrain, but he's still got the same jeans from the original character. This image I added character weight of 100, which is the default, so it shouldn't change much of the clothing. 
But because I added the winter clothing in the prompt, it's kind of created a hybrid. So he's got that blue t-shirt, but it's more of a hoodie. And here's another quick example of changing the outfit. This is the character wearing a spacesuit on the moon. And here's another one of our character riding a horse. And for this one, I wanted him wearing a cowboy outfit. And as you can see, it's made him look like Woody from Toy Story. I think that's because I added in Pixar style, which is the look of the kind of character that I wanted. And this image is with the character weight at 100. So you can see how powerful the character weights are if you want to change the look of your character. To check out the prompts I've used in this video, I've put them all into a free document which you can find in the description down below. Alright, so now let's have a look at changing character expressions. So for this one I wanted to create a sad expression. So I've put a wide shot of a young boy looking sad, and I just reiterated sitting on the floor looking sad at the end as well. So here is our character with a sad expression, and they came out looking really good. Here's the character looking scared in a haunted house. And in this one he's having a good laugh while at a theme park. And here he is thinking in a classroom. And for this prompt I added in to have his hand on his chin, just for that classic thinking pose. It did a pretty good job of adding that in. As you can see he definitely looks like he's thinking about something, which is exactly what I was looking for. Some of them can get a bit weird, as you can see his arms here, it didn't quite know what to do with them. But these are just the first versions, and like I said, you can keep rerunning the prompt to get the version that you like. Now, let's have a look at using the Vary Region tool to edit your character. So I really like this image, but I'm not quite happy with the hand on his hip. So I'm going to use the Vary Region tool to edit that. So make sure to add into the prompt what you're wanting to change. So I've put in a young boy hand and then kept in Pixar style with the rest of the character reference link. And all I will do is just select his hand. And hopefully it should fill that selection with a new hand that looks better than the original one. And it's done a pretty good job, but I'll go with this one as I feel like it just looks more natural. And as you may have noticed, his t-shirt is changing styles from image to image, as if we look at the original image, you can see it's more of a plain blue top without any buttons or collar on it. But in a lot of the images, it's creating the shirt that looks like this with buttons and a collar on it. So there is a way to fix it. So I just cut out the shirt of the original character and then re-uploaded that into Midjourney and created a character reference link just for the shirt. So if we go into very region for this image, I'll write in a blue t-shirt. And then for the character reference link, I'll paste in the link I created for the blue t-shirt of the character. And then just select the t-shirt as closely as you can. And just like magic, our character's t-shirt has changed. And the results are really good. Now some of them aren't perfect, as you can see the collar is a bit chunky on some of them. But this one looks fantastic. So if you really like an image but a part of the clothing isn't quite right, then make sure to use this tip. It's really powerful for fine tuning your images. You can change multiple aspects using this method. As you can see here, I'm going to change his expression by selecting his face and then writing in a young boy is smiling, along with the character reference of that character. And the results look awesome. It's changed his expression while still kind of looking like the character. And here's a little bonus tip. Did you know that you can use character reference to add in any color or texture to your character? I created this image of a green woolly texture, and you can use this as a character reference to put any color or texture onto your character. So I've selected where the t-shirt is, and I've put in a green woolly textured t-shirt, and the character reference link for that green woolly texture. You might not use this tip, but I just thought it was a really cool function, as it allows you to choose your very specific color and put that on your character. And it works really well. So here you can see it's added this green woolly textured t-shirt to our character. And I just think this is awesome, as it allows you to just create your own textures and colors and then put them into your character, rather than prompting in the color and texture and wishing that it came out the color that you wanted whereas this just gives you a lot more control. 
And to match his green woolly t-shirt, I've made his hat into a stainless steel textured hat, and I think it looks really cool. So have a play around with colours and textures to create different looks for your character. Now let's have a look at putting multiple characters in a scene. So I've made a prompt with two characters in it. But the problem is, when using a character reference link, all the characters in your image will look the same. So to fix this, you need to create another character, and then copy the link to that character. And you want to go into Vary Region, and select the character that you want to change. Then paste in the prompt that you used to create that character. So for this one, I've got a young girl I've put sitting on a park bench, and then the rest of the prompt which describes her character and then put in the character reference link to her image. I got some pretty good results. So you can see our character, she is sitting next to the other character that we created. But you can see the results aren't always that great, as this one she's kind of not sitting on the bench properly, and this one she's just not there altogether. And in this prompt I actually changed it to a young girl is sitting next to a boy on a park bench, she looks happy. And the results came out a bit more consistent. Now let's have a quick look at changing the style of your character. The style reference parameter is really fun to use, as it allows you to change your character to be in whatever style you want. There are two ways to do this, you can add the style in the prompt. For this one I've changed it from a Pixar style to a more anime style image. In the prompt I just took out Pixar style and put in 1980s anime style, and the results look really cool. As you can see, it looks just like it's come from a 1980s anime TV show. And the character looks the same. Or you can use the style reference parameter, which allows you to get an image of a style that you like, and add that in at the end of your prompt, using the dash dash sref parameter. Using the Mid Journey Explore page is a really good way to find art styles, so I wrote in 1980 anime TV art style, and I really like the look of this image. So I will copy this image link, I'll add in my prompt again, and I'll add in sref, and paste in that link. And as you can see, it's popped up here, and it has this little clip icon highlighted, which means it's been used as a style reference for this prompt. When using style reference, you get to change how much it influences the prompt using style weight. So style weight goes from 0 to 1000 with 1000 having the most influence on the prompt. So if I put in dash dash sw 1000, it should use that style reference image and kind of make it look more like that image. So here are the images with the style weight of 1000, and they look very close to the style reference image that we used. They've got that old school anime look to them. And if we drop down to style weight 500, they still look very similar. And then with style weight at zero, they just don't look that great. So make sure to play around with styles. Okay, so now I want to show you the very short film I made. I created it using all the tips I've shown you in this video. I hope you enjoy it. Once upon a time, a young boy named Peter set off into the lush green forest in search of a pet. As he wandered, he heard a cheerful ribbit. Following the sound, he found a friendly frog. Will you be my pet? Peter asked. The frog replied, I love hopping in the forest, but I'm sure you'll find a perfect pet. And with a friendly ribbit, the frog hopped away. Next, Peter reached the sparkling ocean. He watched in awe as a graceful fish swam in elegant loops. Would you like to be my pet? The fish bubbled. The ocean is my home, but don't give up. Your search is almost over. With a flick of its tail, the fish disappeared into the deep blue. Peter then ventured into a colorful jungle there, a playful parrot flew down, chattering merrily. Peter laughed and asked, Would you like to come home with me? The parrot whistled, I love to fly freely in the jungle, but your journey will lead you to a great friend. With a flap of its wings, the parrot soared into the trees, and Peter was left alone again. Feeling a bit sad, Peter returned home. As he sat on his porch, he noticed a black kitten quietly watching him. Would you like to be my pet? he asked gently. The kitten purred louder, snuggling into his lap. Finally, Peter found his perfect pet right at his own home. And so Peter learned that sometimes the best adventures and friends can be found in the most unexpected places. 
I think it turned out pretty well. It just shows how powerful this character reference parameter is. I really hope you've learned something in this video and that you are inspired to create your own awesome looking characters. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this and feel free to give us a like and share your tips and tricks in the comment section down below. Don't forget to grab the free PDF in the description box as that contains all the prompts used in this video. If you would like to see another character consistency video using a different technique, then click the link you can see on your screen right now. You won't want to miss it.